Hey, it's Harris Harrington from DepersonalizationRecovery.com. I'm coming at you again with another video on depersonalization disorder and derealization. The topic of this video is brain damage and depersonalization disorder. So a lot of people, when they first get depersonalization and derealization, they think it's either caused by brain damage or they question a lot whether or not there's actual damage in their brains that's causing them to feel out of their body, that's causing them to feel like the world isn't real. To answer this question in the short version is that you really don't have brain damage. At least there's nothing irreparable. You can definitely repair what has gone wrong, so to speak, inside of your head. The way I like to describe it is functional disconnectivity or functional disintegration of the brain. And there's a lot of things that go into this and I don't think that we have all the best answers yet as far as the neurobiology is concerned, but there's certain things that cause depersonalization that, that kind of hinder the, the proper integration of the brain. And this makes it so that your sense of the world is not integrated, right? When you have depersonalization, you still have all your senses. You can still feel everything. Your sense of touch is fine. Your sense of sight is fine. But it's not integrated with your sense of agency, your sense of movement, your sense of self. Okay, it's disintegrated. And what causes that is certain things that happen in your brain. And to get at this, you have to kind of understand memory. Whenever you remember something, you've got two types of memory. You've got the explicit declarative memory, the conscious verbal memory, and then you have the emotional memory. And these are kind of stored in separate areas of the brain, to put it real generally. You have something in your brain called the hippocampus, or hippocampi, because you've got one on each side of your head. And the hippocampus is responsible in many ways for explicit declarative memories, verbal memories, things that you can say in a sentence when you remember an event, you remember the facts of what happened, right? But then along with that type of memory, there is the emotional memory, which is kind of stored in your amygdala, okay? And this is the emotional memory of what happened, the feeling of what happened. Now, depersonalization is caused by trauma and traumatic memories. So what trauma does is it tends to split these two memories apart. So if you experience a traumatic event, you might remember it fine. You might actually remember what happened, but you didn't feel the emotion. You might have been completely, completely cut off from it. And so this is a disintegration of memory, and these are traumatic memories. So this actually does cause damage to your brain. Interestingly, there was also a study done on dissociative disorders, depersonalization being one of them, and they found a correlation between the size of the hippocampus and the severity of dissociation. So people with multiple personality disorder, which is like the most severe form of dissociation, they had the most atrophied hippocampi, along with people with severe post-traumatic stress disorder who have experienced terrible events, a lot of times in battle or war, like veterans, they have very atrophied hippocampi. The reason is when you experience something so traumatic, it's just, just like seeing your whole family get killed or a bomb going off, something like that. What happens is stress, stress molecules, actually go into the hippocampus and actually kill cells. They call that apoptosis. It just, it just kills brain cells in your hippocampus. So your hippocampus can atrophy from traumatic events. And I'm not, I don't think there's been a study specifically on depersonalization that looks at the hippocampus in this way, but essentially trauma causes, can cause the hippocampus to atrophy. Now, interestingly enough, we also know that neurogenesis can happen in the hippocampus. New cells can form. Okay, and they can form in response to a lot of things. Uh, exercise can help, but also psychotherapy can help. And that doesn't just mean talking to a therapist, but actually processing your past on your own, which is kind of one of the core uh, 
basis of my my program, the total integration method, is integrating these past traumatic experiences into your conscious mind. And that can actually help heal this rift in your sense of self that's caused by traumatic memories. So in a sense, your brain is quote unquote damaged, but not in the sense that you've got like a part of your brain missing or that you're quote unquote fucked for the rest of your life. You're not fucked. You don't have real brain damage. Okay, it's like, it's the same for someone who just has anxiety. Do they have brain damage? Well, there, there are things going on there in their brain that aren't optimal, okay? So you want an optimally functioning brain. And you can get that with depersonalization, and there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh, in my program, The Tool Integration Method, I have a, a section on neurobiology. I actually don't think it's that important to really understand for getting over it. You don't really need to know much about the brain to get over DP. You primarily have to process trauma, deal with issues in your current life that are causing you stress, the way you think about your life, your relationships, being assertive in your relationships, and of course your nutrition is important. Exercising is also important too. But you don't have brain damage. You don't. Now, I know if you're feeling DP and, and derealization right now, it could seem like something must be wrong in your brain. But, you know, you can read uh, stories all the time about people that go to get scans of their brain and they find that nothing's wrong. Now, I actually think if, if you want to go get a brain scan, go do it. You know, there's nothing wrong with wanting to know what's going on. You have an absolute right to know what's going on inside your head and go talk to the best neuroscientist you can to get a professional opinion on this topic. I, you know, I, I definitely urge you to do that. And same thing with anyone who's feeling health anxiety, that's worried about their heart or their lungs, go to a doctor, get tests done, and see what's going on. But most likely, you're fine. You need to go through a therapeutic process to repair the dysfunctioning of your brain. And it's not, it's not anything to worry about. So I hope this video was informational for you. Um, do check out my website, depersonalizationrecovery.com. I've got just a ton of free articles and videos. I have a 10 hour program on how to get completely over depersonalization. And it doesn't require a lobotomy. <laughs> so check that out. Stay tuned for many more videos, subscribe. And I will see you soon.